Welcome everyone to the exercise number 5D in the book um, Getting to Know ArcGIS and in this exercise we will um, concentrate on questions like how to represent raster data uh, or raster data in our uh, project here called the Africa Atlas. Therefore uh, in the exercise number 5D there is a new data frame given called topography and what we will do now is we will first add to raster files. Just to make sure that you had understand the raster file um, concept beyond that, um, a raster is something like a matrix and each matrix will represent a given extent in the real world, maybe like 5 meters or something like that or 90 meters or 100 meters. And in each cell there's written down a value and this value represents something, something like a height value. So each cell called or with a value of 50 means that th this cell has a height above sea level of 50 meters or 50 feet. And so this depends on the on the definition of the raster, so which isn't given in any in all the cases we will surely see that in a moment. So what we will do, we will add some data uh, which is stored in the data folder. So we will add these both to the frame topography. Then we will go into the data view. At the moment these layers are beneath the layers of Africa and Greater Horn, so we will adjust the visibility by changing the position in the data frame. So now the um, SHD, which is something like um, how to call it, um, a hill shade, yeah, a hill shade raster file, um, which means that you will see the or, or it is created by interpreting a, um, um, a light source and so um, you will see shadows and um, the aspect maybe of um, of slopes and there's also the DEM so this is the DEM I've just unchecked the, the uh, uh, hill shade and this is a DM, so we'll now go a little bit into detail by zooming in. And one more thing is, um, well, there are these layers are now outgrade because the scale isn't reached in the moment. So just by double clicking on that, go on display, and uh, on, well, say, yeah, general. Um, it is said don't show the layer when zoomed out beyond so keep that in mind this is not not a missing shape file or something like that it is just uh, not showing into the in in this zoom level one more thing is um if you will add these layers to your to your project there there's a possibility that uh, that a pop-up will um or message prompt um will show up uh, which says would you like to create or build pyramids for your layer for the DEM file maybe you should click yes what is a pyramid layer um, it is more or less a version of a raster data set um, in different zoom levels maybe let's call it like that so you have a coarser version of your of your of your DEM and a finer version and so you will build up these zoom levels uh, to get a better uh, handling of the um, of the representation on your on the screen of your desktop uh, PC so you should click yes and everything is fine so what we will do now we will go into detail into this very interesting area so now these uh, shapes are drawn as well but we'll go back to the previous extent what is now the case well you can you represent these values by choosing um, by choosing the color scheme 
So in the moment, uh, the um, height of this uh, of our data is given by um, is given by tones from black to white. So low values are indicated by black, and high values are indicated by white. The same in the hill shade. But at the moment, we don't even know that it's a hill shade. So right click on it, go to properties. I know properties and say the layer name is something like hill shade. So credits on none and well just yeah, there's a, you you can add a description just use for exercise something like that. And say okay. And the same we will do for the DEM. which we will call elevation. Once again, just for exercise, of course, and credits on none. Okay. So we will change the color scheme by double clicking on elevation, go to symbology, and there's still the choose um, of the color ramp. So we have unique values, unique values, Oh, they are not so good because you have a lot of values between minus 169 and over 5000. So there are a lot of values given here uh, to represent your color, which is quite uncommon. Then you have the classified options. So you can classify your heights um, into five classes, 10 classes, whatever, and get them also a color ramp, something like elevation number one. Or elevation number two. I like this more. No, well, same stupid color scheme, I think. Um, so you can change the color scheme by that. There's also a stretched option. So you don't get a real, or you, you, you will not see the value by its color, but you will get an idea about the, uh, about the, um well let's say maybe of the you will get an idea about the height much more and you can differentiate um slopes even better by this and then you have discrete color um which is yeah something like unique values but i don't like discrete colors so I hope you will stick with me. So we, what we will do now, we will change the color ramp and well, this is the um, common color ramp used by in the Berg. I don't like it. Uh, what I like more is this color ramp, which goes from green to brown. And in a moment, you, s you can see that um, the color ramp is well, representing low values by brown and high values by green which is uncommon of course and what you can do is you can ri right click on it oh no we'll go with that where is it where is this little button there it is you can say invert the color scheme so you will represent the low values by green and the high values by brown just click on ok and what you have now is a color representation in shades of green and uh, brown. So this is it for a moment. What we will do now is we will recreate or we will um, make this one visible again and what you can see is now well you don't see the elevation anymore so what is most common is to use the display function and set the transparency maybe to 50% to get a real or a near 3D representation of your heights. So if we we'll go out a little bit more, there's a good feeling of uh, how hard or how steeply inclined is the slope, how high are the um, are the mountains, is, is it a flat area or is it a mountainous area or something like that. So this is a real good thing. In our case, you can also create these hillshade layers if you have a 3D analyst 
or a spatial analyst or I think you can also use the geostatistical analyst tools. So I think this is it for the moment. Let's check once again the um, the Africa Atlas topography. Well, ah, oh no, that is a, this is a wrong extent. So go back to the data view. Choose your extent wisely. In the example of the Berg, the extent is given to the elevation layer. So you can arrange the extent by clicking on Zoom to layer. Now just this layer is shown. All the other layers are grayed out. Go to the data view uh, again. So you have a nice representation of the topography uh, in Ethiopia. I think around Ethiopia. So. Thank you very much for watching. This is uh, now finishing the chapter number five. And I hope you will stay tuned for the other chapters in the book. Thank you very much.